Hi guys and welcome back to the farm in Thailand with Toonin Lee and today is a long overdue video that's been requested by quite a few of you guys and it's about growing trees, fruit trees and uh, bushes in old used car tyres and, and why we do it. So we're going to look at the advantages, um, some of the disadvantages, environmental impact and uh, potential health issues by doing this. So uh, let's go and have a look at what we've done. Now, most of our trees in here have been in about two years, although we've only been on the farm a year and a half. We uh, started planting these before we came here. And uh, just for the record, we got hold of most of our tyres for five bar each. That's right, so if you're in the UK, about 12, 12 p a tyre. So first off, let's let's look at why why Toon and I uh, um, do this, and what advantages we think it gives us. So first off, we obviously integrate our farming fruit trees with a lot of poultry. So this side we've got all our chickens. We've got egg laying chickens, you know, hybrid chickens, and our guy ban chickens, the uh, the Thai skinny chickens that run around like lunatics. And then the other side of the fence here. We've got a small number of khaki Campbells. We've got five girls and uh, two drakes there. And we've also got about 10 Muscovies. Most of them are in the, uh, the house over here at the moment. There's a, there's a, there's a young one. Well, say young, she's uh, it's a boy and uh, she's growing quite quickly. So we haven't got a huge amount of ducks here. We had over a hundred khaki Campbells here before. Uh, and the place was stripped bare. So, if you don't put your trees in tyres, when you do your weeding, which we haven't done for about a year, because they, they generally keep it in check. At the moment, I think we're just coming towards the end of the dry season. Well, I hope to God we are. It's been pig hot. We've had three big downpours, so the soft leaf weeds are, uh, are, are, are shooting up all over the place, so we'll have to get the strimmer out. When you weed round here and you disturb the soil like that, then then your chickens and your your ducks will get in there, which is great because they'll peck around the, any roots that are left in here. Uh, but it does disturb the soil around the base of your tree. Okay, so you see it's quite uneven round here. Um, also, once they, you break the surface of the soil. Uh, the chickens like to get under here to get their sun, uh, to get their shade out of the sun, and uh, they they'll scratch the soil up uh, and dust dust their feathers. So uh, that is a bit of an issue, but it's not too bad. It's not too bad. Whereas in your tyres, uh, I'll just bring you to the weediest one. Weeding is a lot lot easier because your soil is was basically. Um, it's basically just um, poultry poo, so we, we sort of like make a, a duck poo soup and uh, then just put quail poo in there and chicken poo in there. And so it, it's quite nice and quite nice and soft and breaks down quite quite quickly. So this this hasn't we haven't fed this for about two months. I think it's still still quite nice. Um, so doing it this way, when they, they'll still scratch around, but of course, if you don't put them too high, most of it stays into the, it stays in the, in the tire. Okay. So weeding wise, it's, it's easier. And uh, for disturbing or exposing the roots, that helps that quite, quite a lot. The rate of growth, if I take you to a guava we've got here, this isn't, obviously isn't in a tyre and it's grown at about the same rate of knots as a, a guava that was put in the same time. We just ran out of tyres here. So although I'm a fan of tyres, it doesn't seem to, to enable you to, to grow your plants any quicker. Watering is a big improvement. So we've got a cheapest chips irrigation system here. If you haven't seen the video, you can check that out. I'll put a link into that at the, at the end of this video. Um, so it holds the water there. If you can imagine when it's, well, this is what it's normally like in the middle of the dry season. The 
you come over here the little watering head there when that's when that's uh, just sort of like leaching out um, of course your water will go everywhere although it's a slow it's a slow drip system um, you lose a lot of water away from the actual plant now we're off grid as most of you know um, so we're not paying for electric but if you were running an irrigation system on electric if you've got your tires then uh, you're using less water or potentially less water and less electric so uh, that's quite good all right let's have a let's have a look in the uh, the duck area now this area is changing now the rains are starting to come because up until about two two and a half months ago we had over a hundred ducks here about 120 ducks so it was zero weeds now we're just over 20 they're they're struggling to keep up with it so uh we're looking to get more muscovies to keep on top of things but yeah it might have to be uh, strimmed now and again um with the with the tires in here we haven't got an irrigation system we have got the duck pond here and today is a duck pond cleaning i'm just topping that up from uh, a hose that's connected to the irrigation system so i'll turn that off in a minute uh, and then we just put the bucket loads of it into the tires now if we hadn't got the tires we've got a uh, what is it lee uh, a sake tree over here when you put it round here of course a couple of bucket loads and you, you lose a lot of the water so uh, i know you can make a moat round them and that sort of thing to to retain some more water but uh, no the tires easy just throw your bucket load on there two or three bucket loads and it just slowly sinks down into the tyres and um, this is the first year we're letting our mangoes have the fruit and you can just see it, it's gone it's gone crazy just as for the record guys duck poo is the best is the best poultry poo you can give your fruit trees as far as uh, all the uh, all, all the goodness that's in them the chicken manure and the quail manure is still good don't get me wrong so if that's all you've got use that that's fine but if you can get hold of some ducks get the duck crap and you won't go far wrong with that okay so environmental impact all of us know that it's bad to burn off tires uh, and the atmosphere suffers from that uh, but benzene is, is one of the main things that's uh, given off from burning of rubber so uh, it's it's on the list as a as a carcinogen so um, yeah we don't want to be burning off tires do we and uh, this is a good way of recycling them there is a bone of contention and it does get quite heated I've, I've been reading upon this quite a bit and the concerns are all the chemicals additives that go into uh, manufacturing of a, of a tire over time they do actually break down so your benzene plus other things will still be in there and there is a concern that if you're growing edibles in your tyres then they will get into the root system be absorbed by your veg and then you eat your veg so obviously quite disturbing that is but the toxins so the other training thought is the toxins are only released when the tyre is burned as far as the tyres breaking down it takes several decades even in this um, very hot and dry sunny environment um, so there's at the moment there's no um, evidence to prove that you can uh, pick up these toxins from growing edibles in your tire so that's good but there's no evidence either in its crumb form when we say crumb form you know kiddies play areas these days they, they've gone away from bark chippings and wood chippings underneath their slides and swings and stuff and they're using rub, rubber crumb so even in that sort of like semi broken um, broken down form there's still no hard evidence to say that people are uh, being affected by that if it does come to light in the future that it, it is an issue then yeah it's um, it's something that they have to consider guys but uh, for us growing fruit trees uh, we've got a few bushes we've got um, kaffir lime leaf and some lime trees as well 
um, it's not an issue to us. I, I, we don't grow any any edible vegetables, but uh, yeah, we're we're happy with how it's gone. So just to recap, guys, um, it's easier to plant them because you haven't got to dig a hole, and when it's uh, hard as this, the soil, uh, that that's a big thing if you're gonna if you're gonna grow quite a lot of fruit trees. Um, it's easier to weed, in my opinion. It's easier to water, it's more efficient for watering. Uh, easy to feed as well, you just throw a bucket of muck in there. And uh, if you've got poultry integrated with, your, with your, uh, your, your trees and plant, if they do kick the crap around, it's not really an issue, as long as you've left a little bit of uh, space at the top of your tie. So don't overfill your ties, leave a few inches to spare, and then when they kick it around, you don't lose your crap either. If um, your soil quality is a bit pants, then it's easier to uh, just sort out a tire full of good stuff rather than uh, digging a big hole, filling it with you know good organic matter, uh, and then putting your tree in. You just keep on adding your good stuff, and uh, that just just rots down and improves the soil continuously. Um, saving the environment, well, we're helping it in my opinion. They're not being burnt off there, so we've got over 50 tires here. To me, that's, there's 50 tyres that aren't being burnt into the atmosphere. Um, to me, yeah, th there is a bit of an issue about um, health issues in the long term. Um, but with no hard evidence to back it up, well, we're, we're, we're willing to, to, to carry on as a lot of other people are. There's a lot of people that, that won't take the risk. Um, but that's for, that's for you to decide. So that's it really, it's pretty straightforward. Um, me and Tuna are obviously fans of it. Um, there's not many people doing it round here because it's a lot of tyres and I know five bark doesn't sound a lot. Um, if you're doing a farm, it, it, it soon adds up. Um, ah, a couple of other drawbacks. For us ants, uh, particularly red ants, they like to be in there. Now, a lot of people quite like the idea of having red ants uh, around the base of their fruit trees. And why would you like ants around your tree? Well, they eat quite a few bugs. Uh, they eat quite a lot of varieties of, of caterpillars out here. So they can be a help. The reason I don't like it, other than them biting you when you're pulling the weeds out, um, it makes the soil very granular. Like, uh, what I mean by that, it's, it's almost like, um, what would we say, like a sugar. Uh, and that's not great for the roots. They, they actually do that all the way around the bottom. Here we go, there's one here. So, if I start kicking around there, very, very fine, which looks good, but it'll be like that quite far down and all through the root systems. So every now and again, um, when it gets like that, we will flood the tyres for a couple of hours. Um, why would, and then that, that will unearth all, that will bring them all up to the top. Uh, and then we just use a little bit of a soap powder, washing soap powder, mix with water and go around spraying. You won't, you'll never get rid of them, but it keeps them in check. Uh, but like I say, some people, they, they quite like having the ants. But if you, if you don't keep them in check, guys, when you either water them a lot or you get some heavy rain this will be all over the place okay it become very very unstable in there you don't put these sit these uh, trees and plants just on top of the soil and fill your tire you just make a bit of a divot about that deep break the, break the surface of the soil up so when you put your root stock in it's half in and half out and then put the good stuff in, um, up and then you leave a good two or three inches there so that's really it. The only other thing, now and again, I don't know about anywhere else, you will get little toads and little mice. So here's one and here. And there'll be a toad or a, a little family of mice in there. So of course we're keeping poultry and uh, although the ducks do eat everything quite quickly, there'll still be the odd scrap left around and food waste and that that we throw out maybe the, the ducks miss a bit so family of mice uh, they'll get a few grains of rice and, and go back in there the dry season these tyres will have little 
little toads in there, then you get the heavy rains and then they'll dig their way out. But really, we haven't lost any trees through um, mice. I think we've lost one tree through ants. Um, so it's all good, the toads are no problem at all. Now we've done another video on um, organic pest control as well. So I'll put that at the end as well. So you'll get, you'll get two links on the end shots in a minute. One for organic spraying and the other one will be for that irrigation, cheap irrigation system that we've set up. Right, I need to get back because the, uh, the duck pond is overflowing and they need to empty that. So that's why I've got me, uh, me shitty duck clothes on because uh, dirty duck water is going to go flying everywhere. Okay guys, thanks for watching as always. And a quick shout out uh, to Uncle Marky's daughter, Olivia. We had him over yesterday. He did behave himself and uh, it was lovely to meet the old man. So you've got a good dad there and uh, thanks for watching. Ta-da for now.